All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 3 minus 27 is equal to 0. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite, oops, sorry about that. I'm going to first rewrite 27 here as 3 to the power of 3. So now I have x to the power of 3 minus 3 to the power of 3 is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, this is equal to a minus b times a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is equal to x and b is equal to 3. So now I have x minus 3 times x squared plus 2 times x times 3 plus 3 squared. Now this is equal to x minus 3 times x squared plus 2 times 3 is 6. So I have 6x plus 3 squared is 9. And remember this is all equal to 0. Now this is going to give me two equations. I have x minus 3 is equal to 0. And I also have x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. So for x minus 3 equals 0, all I have to do is add 3 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 3. So this is a simple equation. Now for x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 0, I actually have to use the quadratic formula to solve this. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is equal to 1 b is equal to 6, and c is equal to 9. So now I have x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times a which is 1 times c which is 9 all over 2a. Now to simplify, I have negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared is 36 minus 4 times 9 is 36 all over 2 and now this is equal to negative 6 plus or minus 36 minus 36 is 0 and the square root of 0 is 0 all over 2 and if I simplify this I get negative 6 over 2 which is negative 3 so my two solutions are 3 and negative 3All right, so in this problem, I have 30 to the power of 90 over 90 to the power of 60. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite 90 here as 3 times 30. So now I have 30 to the power of 90 over 3 times 30 to the power of 60. Now, if I have something in the form a times b to the power of m, this is equal to a to the power of m times b to the power of m. So in this case, I have 3 times 30 to the power of 60. And that's going to equal 3 to the power of 60 times 30 to the power of 60. Now, I can rewrite this as 30 to the power of 90 over 3 to the power of 60 times 1 over 30 to the power of 60. And if I have something in the form 1 over a to the power of m, it's the same thing as a to the power of negative m. So 1 over 30 to the power of 60, that's going to equal 30 to the power of negative 60. And now, I can put this as 30 to the power of 90 times 30 to the power of negative 60 over 3 to the power of 60. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So in this case, I have 30 to the power of 90 times 30 to the power of negative 60 
So this is going to equal 30 to the power of 90 plus negative 60. And now I have this over 3 to the power of 60. Now 30 to the power of 90 plus negative 60, well that's the same thing as 30 to the power of 90 minus 60 because a positive and negative make a negative. And 90 minus 60 is 30, so I have 30 to the power of 30 over 3 to the power of 60. Now 3, 3 to the power of 60, that's the same thing as 3 squared to the power of 30. And 3 squared is equal to 9, so I have 30 to the power of 30 over 9 to the power of 30. So now if I have something in the form a to the power of m over b to the power of m, this is equal to a over b to the power of m. So this is equal to 30 over 9 to the power of 30, which is equal to 10 over 3 to the power of 30. So this is my answer. All right, so in this problem, I'm actually going to prove that 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. So I have, I'm going to first actually start with 0 is equal to 0. And this is obviously a true statement. Any number is equal to itself. Now, for my left-hand side, I'm going to rewrite the 0 as 20 minus 20 because, well, anything by itself is zero. And now for my right-hand side, I'm gonna write the zero as 25 minus 25. And this is obviously legal because 20 minus 20 is zero, 25 minus 25 is zero. Now, 20 here, this is equal to four times five. So now I can rewrite 20 as four times five minus, again, 20, I can rewrite as four times five. And for my right-hand side, I'm going to rewrite 25 as 5 times 5. And again, I'm going to rewrite this as 5 times 5. Now, from here, if I factor out 4 from my right-hand side, I get 4 times 5 minus 5. And for my right-hand side, if I factor out 5, I get 5 times 5 minus 5. Now, if I divide both sides by 5 minus 5, well, these two cancel out, these two cancel out, and I am left with 4 is equal to 5. And 4 is the same thing as 2 plus 2, so I have 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 as well. So I just proved that 4 equals 5 and 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. Now, we obviously know that this is not right. 4 does not equal 5. So where did I go wrong? Well, if you notice over here, I divided both sides by 5 minus 5. Well, we know that 5 minus 5 is 0. So this is the same thing as 4 times 0 is equal to 5 times 0. And if I divide both sides by 5 minus 5, or also 0, well, I can't cancel out 0 and 0 because 0 divided by 0 is not 1, it's undefined. 0 divided by 0 has no definite value. So I can't cancel these out, this is wrong. Meaning this is wrong as well and 4 is not equal to 5. This proof is wrong. 